MCO for Null and Void with commencement of CMCO and MCO5. State governments face possible lawsuits for MCO non-compliance. You're watching Updates at Noon with me, Brendan Lipol. Senior Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob says the regulations under Phase 4 of the Movement Control Order, MCO, are now null and void with the commencement of the Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, or Phase 5 of the MCO. Therefore, all parties must adhere to the regulations stipulated under Phase 5 of the MCO. Jadi jika ada pihak-pihak tertentu yang mengatakan kami masih ingin mematuhi akta dan peraturan di bawah PKP4, maka ianya salah di sisi undang-undang kerana PKP4, apa yang diwartakan di bawah PKP4 sudah pun terbatal dengan sendiri kerana kita telah pun menggantikan dengan peraturan baru di bawah PKP5. Jadi sebab itulah saya harap kita tidak keliru kerana ini kerana sekarang seluruh negara termasuk negeri dan daerah tertakluk ke kepada Akta 342 dan peraturan-peraturan yang diwartakan di dalam PKP5 ini. The senior minister added that the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988, Act 342, would still apply during the CMCO period, and penalties that await violators also remain the same as the previous MCO. He also said that members of the public who spotted individuals defying the SOP could lodge a report at nearby police station and local authority offices such as district councils, municipalities and others. People can also lodge a complaint via the National Security Council, MKN Hotline at 03-8888-2010 or at MyGCC 03-8000-8000, which operates 24 hours. On another note, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said the government has made it mandatory for foreign workers across the country to undergo COVID-19 screening with employers bearing the test costs. He noted that this was decided after the rise of COVID-19 cases in the country over the past few days, the majority comprising foreign workers. The senior minister said the health ministry proposed to start these swab tests in the federal territories and Selangor. Jadi untuk membendung penularan COVID-19 ini, kerajaan akan menutup di mana saja tempat jika ada berlakunya positif COVID-19 di kalangan pekerja mereka. Tak kiralah tapak pembinaan, kilang, mahupun restoran ataupun apa-apa perniagaan. Jika ada kita kesan terdapat COVID positif di kalangan pekerja mereka, maka kilang ataupun sektor-sektor tersebut akan ditutup serta merta. On Saturday, 27 new COVID-19 cases were detected at a construction site in Jalan Ampang, Kuala Lupo. The construction site has now been closed. Health Director General Dato Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah says wearing face masks is strongly encouraged among the rakyat, especially those in public and crowded areas. He said although it's not a necessity but it will be helpful to reduce the risk of infection from COVID-19. Jadi kita menggalakkan mereka memakai mask tetapi sekarang ini bukan satu kewajipan. Uh, tetapi syarat-syarat yang lain yang contohnya penjarakan yang selamat itu kena diamalkan iaitu sekurang-kurang dia satu uh, meter dan kalau kita boleh amalkan penjarakan uh, sosial iaitu satu meter jadi kita boleh elakkan jangkitan uh, ataupun penularan uh, COVID-19 ni. When asked on the ministry's justification on the CMCO, which has been gazetted, Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham said the strategy for MCO Phase 1, 2 and 3 was to flatten the curve by encouraging everyone to stay at home. The Health Director General added that now it is important for the Rakyat to adhere to the standard operating procedure SOP throughout the new phase of the CMCO set by the government.
Yang dipertuan agung Al Sultan Abdullah Rayyatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah yesterday granted an audience to Senior Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob via teleconferencing. His Majesty was briefed on the role and efforts of the government in implementing the Movement Control Order (MCO). During the 20-minute session, Al Sultan Abdullah was also told of the measures and action taken by the Defence Ministry and the Belizean Armed Forces to tighten control at the country's borders and to tackle the issue of illegal entry by foreigners. His Majesty also expressed his appreciation and thanks to the government, especially frontliners, for working tirelessly to ensure that the spread of COVID-19 can be stopped. The King also expressed his gratitude to all members of the Fire and Rescue Department who have been at the front line lines with other personnel to curb the spread of the virus. Therefore, the young Dipatuan Agong called upon the people to appreciate their services because they were willing to sacrifice their own safety in order to save the lives of others. Malaysia welcomes the establishment of the non-aligned movement NAM Task Force to create common database for basic medical needs and identify social and humanitarian requirements of member states. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin in a speech at the NAM's online summit level meeting warned that small countries risk getting left behind in terms of obtaining medicines and vaccines once they are developed by pharmaceutical firms in more advanced nations. Elaborating further, Tan Sri Muhyiddin said Nam countries needed to be united and more prominent in advocating for smaller nations to have access to medical supplies, medications and vaccines. Malaysia's concern is that if you are not united, smaller nations will be sidelined when the medications and vaccine is developed by a pharmaceutical giants in advanced nations. We must strongly condemn the declarations and applications of unilateral cohesive measures against non member state, especially while the world is facing this unprecedented pandemic. The Premier added that on the country's efforts, the government has put in place a six-step plan in addressing the impacts COVID-19 has had on the country and to ensure Malaysia emerges stronger from the ravages of COVID-19. NAM represents 120 nations, 17 states and 10 global organizations as observers. Collectively, the movement makes up nearly two-thirds of the United Nations members and leads 55%, more than half of the world population. Policemen will be stationed in public areas to ensure social distancing is practiced by the masses. Salango Police COVID-19 Special Spokesman, Assistant Commissioner Mohamed Yazid Mohamed Yu said that this included wet markets. Commenting further on the matter, ACP Mohamed Yazid said the police will take an educational approach to advise people on the need to maintain social distancing. Speaking to the media at the state police headquarters yesterday, he also said that the public is urged to be disciplined in this matter. He also said that spot checks would be conducted at work areas to check on compliance levels. On current statistics, ACP Mohamed Yazid said that 43 roadblocks are still operational from the previous 102. The COVID-19 special Spokesman added that up until the 3rd of May, Selangor police have made 5,473 arrests, while a total of 2,479 investigation papers have been opened. 
Coming up next, PNB introduces Focus 4 strategic plan. Stay with us. Senior Minister Datuk Seri Mohamad Azmin Ali says state governments may face legal action from various parties, particularly industry players, if they stop businesses from resuming their operations. The Senior Minister of International Trade and Industry said the government views seriously the position taken by the various state governments in refusing to execute the decision to restart the economy. Datuk Sri Azmin said the decision to reopen the economic sectors under the terms of the Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, was taken with utmost care, caution and responsibility supported by data and findings by the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of International Trade and Industry, MITI, Bank Negara Malaysia and Kazana Nasional Berhad. He said the findings were presented for discussion with the Menteri's Bersa and Chief Minister at the meetings of the National Security Council on 28th April, whereby the state governments realised that should the MCO continue until June 2020, the cumulative loss of national income is estimated to reach 146 billion ringgit or a shortfall of 10.3% of the gross domestic product, which would wipe out the economic success that has been achieved over the last four years. Therefore, the government's decision to allow almost all sectors of the economy to operate in order to revive and revitalize the economy is expected to have a positive impact on the economic growth and financial position of the country, not only for the federal government but also for the states. Hence, the senior minister urged state governments to cooperate in executing the federal government's decision to regenerate the economy. The Johor State Government implemented the Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, as announced by Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin yesterday. Menteri Besar Datuk Hasni Muhammad said the State Government was prepared to face all the odds and was confident of having adequate quarantine centres and medical expertise. To ensure the success of the CMCO in the states, the local authorities, PBT, Johor State Health Department as well as the District Health Office, the Royal Malaysia Police and the Johor National Security Council will work together. On the standard operating procedures, SOPs, set by the federal government, Dato Hasni said modifications to the SOPs could be made if the local authorities found there was a need to do so. He said the state government had also made sure that the relevant agencies have adequate resources and have studied the SOPs set by the federal government and based on the capabilities of all the agencies including the police, MMEA and related agencies. He added that the state took the initiative to develop the Joho application to monitor the movement of individuals for safety purposes. Malaysia's largest fund manager, Permodalan Nasional Berhad, PNB, has outlined a strategic plan called Focus 4, which aims to ensure that the company is well positioned to navigate to navigate through the financial market downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, its president and chief executive officer, Jalil Rashid, said with Focus 4, PNB would continue to accelerate its portfolio diversification via investments into new asset classes and geographies, including global real estate opportunities with attractive yields. We have put in much effort recently to amplify and simplify our communication to our stakeholders. <clears throat> we realize that during a time like this, it is important to keep an open, honest and timely communication with all of you to help you understand our aims and how we are preparing ourselves for the uncertain future. Jalil added that PNB also plans to increase its global exposure to 30% this year from 8.5% as of end 2019. He further noted that PNB would also strategically diversify its investments over a spectrum of global assets while increasing capital efficiency and crystallizing a more vibrant investment process. 
With that, we conclude today's updates at noon. Now in our top story, state governments face possible lawsuits from affected industries for MCO non-compliance. Now before we go, don't forget to wash your hands regularly, practice social distancing and most of all, let's all adhere to the movement control order and just stay at home. Till then, I'm Brendan Lipol. See you then.